Welcome to another case of probability. And in probability, of course, we get to play around with events. Fun events. Today we're going to talk about dependent events. And dependent events, of course, have everything to do with being dependent or relying on a previous event. So in other words, the second one really can't happen unless the first one has happened. Let's take an example of this. And even though we got some new scary words, you'll see that this concept is something that you've done in the past. Dependent variables. Here we go. Two red marbles. Three white marbles. Four blue marbles are in a bag. If one marble is drawn and not replaced, and the second marble is drawn, what is the probability that both marbles will be red? All right, let's get to this. First of all, we have to look at understanding this probability of event A. That would be the first event. The probability of event A is getting a red marble. To get a red marble, we need to take the number of a red marbles. Sometimes we say the favorable event, or what we want, over the total number. Why am I writing that? Total number of marbles. So, the probability of event A, or to get a red marble the first time would be, okay, I got two red marbles, that's what I want, so two. And how many marbles are, are there? Two plus three plus four. Nine. So the probability of getting red the first time is equal to two ninths. However, We have a dependent event, and it happens to do with this. You see, after I pluck one of these beautiful red marbles out, the other one, I'm not going to put it back in. I did my say. I'm not going to put that marble back in. So, so, we need to think about our new bag of marbles. If we look at our probability of our second event, which is also getting a red marble, right? We need, once again, the number of red or what we want are favorable over the total number of marbles. But remember, our first marble did not go back into the bag. So, the probability of getting a second red marble in a row, the first time we took one out. So now there is only one red marble left. And then we're going to take three plus four plus the one that is still in the back. So that gives a total of eight. And so to get a red marble the second time, it's only one out of eight. However, we're not done yet. Because to find the probability, we want to know that both will be red. So I'm going to take the probability of event A and the probability of event B. That's what I really want. So I'm going to take probability of my first event, which we call A, and I'm going to multiply it times the probability of event B. This is very common to what we call compound probability. It works together with it. So not all compound probability are dependent events. This one is dependent. That's why this fraction changed. So in the end, we're going to take two nines and we're going to multiply by one eight and two times one of course equals two and nine times eight of course equals 72 and then i'm going to reduce to 136 and so the probability of getting red marbles two times in a row is 136 quite extraordinary Let's try it again. It says two cards are drawn 
from a regularly shuffled deck. What is the probability of drawing two aces? In other words, an ace and then another ace. Okay, we're going to draw two cards. So, probability of drawing an ace and an ace. In other words, the probability of first drawing an ace times the probability of drawing another ace the second time after the first ace has been removed. So, to put this into perspective, I know that a deck of cards has four beautiful aces. And I also know that a deck of cards has 52 cards. So to start, I have four out of 52. <laughs> we don't know, we can reduce that. We can reduce this because that's one out of 13, because that is one ace out of every 13 cards. So my probability for my first ace is one thirteenth. However, the next time I draw, I have to remember, okay, I took one out. Now I only have three aces left to draw from. But this time, our problem is a little bit more complicated because we have to include all of the cards except for one. The one we didn't put back. So there are 51 cards left in the stack. Now, this fraction is also reducible because 51, 5 plus 1 is 6, which means 51 is divisible by 3. So, to divide 3 by 3 gives me a 1, and to divide 51 by 3 gives me a, a, a 17, I believe. And so I have this number. And from there, I can solve my probability of my event. Let me add some color to this. It looks exactly the same because blue and black are so similar. To draw an ace and then draw another ace, it would be 1 13th times 1 17th. And I've changed my accent. Let's get back to this wonderful accent that I truly have. And I'm going to have 1 over 221. And voila. That is your probability of drawing two aces in a row in a deck of cards. Let's review a little bit, and then I'll let you dabble with this wonderful dependent event. The key idea here is our first event has everything involved. All the aces, all the cards. In our previous example, it has all of the marbles. But once we take one out, the second event is going to have one less of the previous. And because it has one less of the previous, we need to adjust our numbers because our second event has changed. It is dependent on the first event. And so because of that, we have to rethink, just like what we did here, we had to rethink our total number because one less is there. All right, it's your turn now. I've done enough of this beautiful talking. So it is your turn to find this concept. You can do it. I believe in you. That is it for lesson 98.